This is a story that from the beginning, you know, those in power didn't want to talk about, didn't want to answer questions about by putting the story that nobody wants to read, that nobody wants to think about on the front page day after day. We've made sure that, uh, you know, that it's on the record. In late 2014, we were pushing hard for the government to do something about this, to, to launch a review. SickKids made the decision to suspend operations at the Mother Risk Lab in March of 2015. The following month, they closed the lab forever. And at the same time, the government announced that they were expanding the scope of the review of Mother Risk from 2005 to 2015. At that time, the Ontario government imposed a moratorium on using hair testing in child protection cases at all in ongoing and future child protection cases throughout the province. And that was really big. For a long time, we were out on this story alone, but we really wanted to know, you know, in the aftermath of all this, what is happening across the country? And in order to really investigate this, we teamed up with uh, the CBC, the, the Current and the Fifth Estate. We spent the last five months traveling the country and uh, talking to affected families about their experiences. Many of them are pursuing lawsuits against the hospital, against the individuals who worked in the lab. And there's also a proposed class action lawsuit that's up for certification. So the story is far from over in part because we still don't know the full impact. SickKids has never released complete numbers and we're hoping that these reviews that are underway are gonna give us a sense of how many cases actually were affected. Holes in the system still remain. We found that in seven provinces, child welfare agencies are still relying on some form of drug and alcohol testing. In two provinces, they're still relying on hair testing. No province currently has legislation in place to make sure that laboratories that produce forensic evidence are certified to forensic standards. I think it showcases the importance of getting it right and making sure that the evidence that's used in, in child protection cases, in cases that have involved some of the most vulnerable members of society, you know, who don't have the money, uh, sometimes don't have the ability to make their voices heard, that uh, those proceedings are going to be fair and uh, that we're not going to be relying on flawed evidence and we're going to do what we can to make sure that evidence doesn't get into the courts.